Hi folks, Chris Anderson with Mount Comfort RV. I'm here today to do a Freelander uh, from Coachman. This is the 21 QB floor plan. This is a 2018 model. By the way, we are located right on I-70, just east of Indianapolis. So um, if, a lot of times people on the video don't know where Mount Comfort RV is, and somebody said, hey, you ought to say that. So eh, they were right. So there you go. If you're watching this video and you're the one that made your suggestion, see, I'm paying attention sometimes. Um, this 21 QB, uh, built on a Chevy chassis. It's also available on a Ford chassis. Uh, really small differences between the two. Uh, I always tell people, you know, the most reliable part of any of these motorhomes is the chassis, the engine, the drivetrain, the transmission. If you keep good tires on to keep your oil changed, it's going to go down the road. I don't care whether it's Chevy or Ford. Um, in fact, when we order these from, from Coachman, we usually look and see, you know, hey, has somebody got a deal going on? Sometimes Coachman, uh, sometimes Coachman tells us that Ford's got a little discount, sometimes Chevy's got a little discount. It means so little to us um, because they're both so reliable. Whichever one has the deal going, you can bet that's what we're ordering that week so don't don't lose your mind when you're trying to decide what motorhome to buy don't lose your mind over Ford and Chevy I promise you they're both good chassis and that is by far the most dependable part of, of, of everything involved with an RV we just very rarely have chassis related issues so um, like I said keep good tires on keep the oil changed it'll go down the road for you but this one is a Chevy so as we look around, obviously, you can see they use that kind of butter colored glass. They've been using that for a few years now, and that's been very, very well received. We'll work our way around. This does have running boards on it as well, so it makes the step in and out so much easier. When, uh, when they don't have that, you have to step all the way up to that first step there, and that is a, a little trickier. The Chevy chassis actually have a little bit more room in the, in the cab area here, especially I notice it on the passenger side, uh, a little bit more footwell room than the Ford. Um, but like I said, there's advantages either way there. Um, and I like that there's no carpet in there. That's all rubber floor can be sponged out, and if, uh, if it needs a, good, needs a good washing, it's e easy to give it there. But that's easy in, easy out there. As we go back through here, you're going to see some uh, some different selling points on here. This is actually my best selling motorhome. Um, so if if we'll probably use this video on more than one um, as we go through because they, they haven't changed it a, a tremendous amount, but uh, uh, small changes may be made. So if the video is not 100% accurate, um, th that would be why. But but I think you'll find that this is a um, a pretty informative video and, and has all the details you need to make a decision. We have a power awning that runs one end to the other with an LED light strip underneath it. That's going to make it really, this is where you spend your time. When you're in the campground, your two lawn chairs are here, your friends are here, that's lit up out here. You don't have to hang the individual little lights because the light's already out there, so um, it makes it very, very easy and one less thing to do on setup. One of the things I like to point out too is your stove actually vents all the way to the outside. That's not always true on RVs, so it's something you want to look for. That way if you do get dinner a little too done, um, it, it actually vents all the way out, not just that little fan that makes a lot of noise and really doesn't do anything. This is prepped for solar. Now let's talk about that for a minute. For most people, you're not going to get much out of, good out of solar. Um, the way most RVers use this, and you may be different, I understand that, but the way most RVers use this is they take this motorhome, they drive it to a campground, they pull into the campground, they plug it in, um, and they go on about their business. Really, solar's not going to do you a lot of good in that application. You can keep it plugged into an extension cord, for crying out loud, at home to keep your, keep your batteries charged, and the amount of charge you get out of a solar panel isn't much. But if you are one of those folks that really likes to boondock, you will get a little extra battery juice, a little extra charge um, when you're boondocking, when you're not plugged in at a campground, from that solar panel. The solar panel is sold separately, but the coach is 100% prepped for it. So if you do want to use that, it is there. Okay. This is also prepped for an outside entertainment center. We have the hook up into the, um, the uh, coaxial there that'll hook you up into your antenna or DVD or um, even uh, um, satellite. If you do put a satellite dish on this, you have the hook up for that and you do have 110 power out here. So if, if you don't want to put a TV outside, eh, you can use it for just some extra storage. Propane tank is under this one. These are, of course, dual rear wheels on here, as you would expect to see on this chassis. Um, and then here's what sells this motorhome. Probably more than any one single feature is the amount of ridiculous storage that this has. This has more than any other Class C in the marketplace. Um, storage is just ridiculous here. Um, these are all ABS pans. They're one piece. They're not seamed. They do put a little drain hole down in there, so if water does get in there, um, and the way water would get in there is, let's say you were using this as like a tailgater, you can fill one of those with ice 
um, put your drinks inside pull your drinks out when you're done let the let the ice melt when it melts the water runs out the hole so uh, that makes it super super easy this is an insulated uh, panel here so um, that will even make this into one ginormous cooler back here if you want so great storage and it is accessible both from this side and from the back all right you do have a four inch steel bumper on here now inside this bumper that's where you actually store your sewer hose but if you wanted to put like a bike rack or something back here you could there is a hitch down here as well that's rated to pull 5,000 pounds down the road so any mid-sized car uh, that is towable either on a dolly or uh, four wheels down that is where you would actually get that done this comes with the ladder as well you'd be surprised when they're trying to hit certain price points with these coaches you'd be surprised what manufacturers will leave off I've seen them without ladders running boards generators but hey it's a great price well those are things you're going to want anytime you need to get on your roof just to check things out to do any maintenance of any kind whatsoever you had a big hailstorm you want to make sure your vent cover didn't get cracked you know having the ladder there is very 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 handy so this is included on there so you can get right up on there there's your secondary access into your back storage compartment as well Moving on around, when we want to hook up to the city water, we do it right here through this. That's actually behind a key. That's good. Um, uh, that way nobody's uh, tampering with your, with your water set up there. This is where you would hook up a portable satellite dish, or if the campground has cable, you would hook that in there, and then you can watch uh, whatever channels you want on the inside. This just does take unleaded fuel. I get that question from, from time to time. Do I have to put premium in it? Heck no. Just regular old 87 octane unleaded is, is all you need to put in here. Here's your water heater. This is a six gallon gas water heater. It does have the DSI automatic ignition system on it, so it'll light itself. You don't have to mess with pilot lights or anything. All right, let's get down here. If we look behind this compartment, we actually have a 4KW Onan generator by Cummins. That is the industry standard. Uh, great little generator. The best thing you can do with these generators is use them. The only problems we tend to have with them are when people don't use them enough. The more hours you put on this, the better, and you can run these for days at a time. Uh, myself, personally, I like to go to a lot of races, um, and, and usually I go to places where they don't have hookups for RVs. So I start the generator when I leave, and I shut it off four days later when I get back, and it was probably 90 degrees out while, while the race was going on. The, the generator never shut off for four days. Um, it, it actually doesn't hurt them a bit. In fact, those are generators with more hours on them are generally the, runs, the ones that run the best. So don't be afraid to use it. Yes, you can use it going down the road. A lot of people ask that question, can I use my gen going down the road? Heck yes, you can't expect that dash air conditioner to cool um, the entire coach. You're going to need this running down the road because you're going to want to run a, your roof air conditioner. And, that's how you would do it all right uh, we do have the big mirrors here as you can see and they do collapse um, you can get into this coach a few different ways we already saw the passenger side here's the driver's side give you a good view of that all right tell you what I know what you really want to see is on the inside let's go there now Okay, we are inside of the 21QB from Freelander. Um, great looking coach inside and outside. You've seen the outside, now let's, let's, let's check out the inside. One of the things that makes this floor plan sell, I showed you probably the biggest one, which is that amazing amount of storage on the outside. But on the inside, um, generally speaking, when you have a corner bed here, nine times out of 10, it's a full size, not a queen. Most people sleep on at least a queen size bed at home. So um, this is actually a little wider body than most, which gives you the queen size bed so they did kind of contour one corner here just slightly it's not a big contour as you can see here just so that it makes it easier to walk in and out of the bathroom um, so it's a nice pillow top sort of mattress this is not something um, like you typically get on rvs <laughs> um, it's a good place for manufacturers to cut corners is to give you the cheapest mattress on the planet this actually has a nice pillow top in it double door refrigerator here so you have the freezer up top refrigerator down below this is a six cubic foot gas and electric refrigerator let's take a look at the bathroom here I'm gonna step out of the way I'll narrate 
All the way in the back corner is a shower with a glass door, not some ch uh, chintzy little shower curtain. You do have a sink in here that's very accessible and a toilet. It's a small bathroom, but it's well laid out and it is very, very usable. You have room for your knees. Your knees aren't hitting the door when you close the door. Um, little things like towel racks and the toilet paper holder are already there. You'd be surprised how many times those are not included. It is a foot flush toilet, not a hand flush toilet. Um, I always make fun of the hand flush toilets because when you go to pull that lever and you have to bend way over and reach to the back, where's your face when your hands uh, It's just not a good setup. So um, foot flush, much better. Face away from toilet. Okay. We have a wardrobe closet here. Lots of hanging space in there. Drawers down below as well. I'll show you those. Of course, these are full extension ball bearing drawer glides. That little pole there is used when we make the dinette into a bed. That's what the short poles are for. These are very nice drawers, they're fully lined. It's gorgeous. Okay, this coach actually sleeps six comfortably. So two back here. This makes into a nice size bed here at the U-shaped dinette. And then you have the bed up top is actually bigger than a queen. So six people sleep comfortably in here. A lot of people are loving the U-shaped dinette here. Even little things like cup holders put in the back here. So when your family's back here riding, there is there are three seat belts on this booth um, as well. So five get buckled up in here easily. Um, and uh, you put drinks back there in your cup holders, like I said. Um, three burner cooktop with an oven. Again, one of the things that they often, when they're trying to hit a price point, one of the first things they leave out is the oven. But we've found that a lot of our viewers really like the oven. We talked about the vent being, uh, the stove hood being vented to the outside. We do have a nice little Magic Chef microwave as well. Here's a nice little feature. Look at this guy. All right, that pops up. We have outlets and we have USB built in. So um, you're gonna charge your favorite device, you can do it right there. Of course, you have your little one bowl sink here. Let's look at some of the storage here. I'll get out of the way. Okay. There is storage underneath this booth as well. The, the, uh, you take the cushions off and the tops come off and you can get in there for storage. This does come with a couple of things here to, of, of note. First of all, we do have a TV on a swing arm and you can kind of see that from anywhere in the coach. Even if you're in bed, you swing that TV out. I believe that's a 32 inch Furion. You swing that TV out, you can see that all the way from the bed. But other things is this cushion right here folds into place. Let me show you how this works. This flips up and over. Now there's a solid backer in that, so it's not gonna fall through being there. And this makes, like I said, that's actually a little bigger than a queen bed here. You can see the TV on the swing arm. This does come with the ladder, with the TV, with the DVD player. They did not cut corners for this. Even comes with the child safety net. So once the kids are inside, you can buckle these and that will keep the children from falling on their heads in the middle of the night. So makes it nice when you're not using this, when you're driving and going down the road, you simply unbuckle these two little seat belt connectors, flip this over, and it makes it so much easier to get in and out of this area here. This is a touchscreen Bluetooth radio with backup camera built in, three cup holders up front in the Chevy chassis. So this has been a quick video, but oh, I forgot some of the storage up here. Let's look, we got storage above the dinette. Those are wide open all the way through, so any big items can fit in there as well. LED lighting. Of course, all the motorhomes are gonna have the basics, heating, air conditioning, hot water. You're gonna have that on all the motorhomes. You have to watch on some of them when they're hitting price points, where did they cut the corners? Where did they um, leave something out? Because if, if one model is less expensive than another model, there's a reason, and, and you probably wanna know what it is. The rest of this uh, video I'm gonna talk about here, we're gonna talk about construction. I saved this for the last because some people don't care, okay? Some people want floor plan and price. Other people want to know, uh, tell me a little bit more about how it's built, okay? If that's you, stay tuned. One of the biggest things, um, you always wonder where a manufacturer cuts corners. Where, well, the manufacturers, when they are trying to hit price points, they'll cut corners in a, in a point where you don't see it usually. Um, sometimes it's little things like running boards or ladders that you might not pick up on. Sometimes it's, it's bigger things like generators where you might think you can live without it and then you won't know that you really need a generator until you get out and use it and then it's $6,000 to add a generator later. Um, little things like that, but so, sometimes it's a lot more subtle than that. One of the first things I look at on a product, if, if we're considering carrying it at Mount Comfort RV, one of the first things I look at is right here. 
Okay, I want to know the thickness of this wall. All of these doors are like two and a quarter inches thick. That's just the thickness of these doors, and um, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty um, common door frame in our industry. What you want to look for is what type of trim do they use right here next to the door? Do they use a little flat piece like this, or do they use a big thick piece of wood there to hide the fact that their wall is either only an inch or an inch and a half thick? This is a full two inch thick sidewall. That's important. The reason that's important is because we're talking about the insulation value of the motorhome. That extra half inch or inch in some cases of insulation makes a difference. That insulation is that white bead foam, same stuff that our little coffee cups are made out of. When you think about that coffee cup, that's about an eighth of an inch thick and you can hold boiling water in your hand. So it doesn't take much of that insulation to make a huge difference. When you're talking to an extra half inch or an inch, it's gonna be how loud is my motorhome going down the road? How much do I hear my neighbors at night? How easy is it to heat? How easy is it to cool? Those are important things that a lot of times people don't think about until after they've bought the motorhome. And at that point, it's obviously too late. Um, we love the Coachman product because it's all two inch thick sidewall um, th throughout everything. So it's a good, well insulated sidewall. All right, let's uh, step to the outside a little bit here. get into a little bit more on construction. Um, they build these walls, they're in a lamination facility, um, and, and the way these walls are built, they're built to be light, they're built to be made quickly, um, and, and from some manufacturers, they're built to see how cheap they can make it. Um, Coachman takes some steps that are not commonplace, so let's talk about that for a minute. First of all, if we were looking at this wall and it hadn't been put on the motorhome yet, two people could easily pick up this entire sidewall. It's all one piece, two people could easily pick it up. Okay, it's not all that heavy whatsoever because it's made out of aluminum, uh, fiberglass, and foam are the, are the main components in there. The way 98%, I'm, I'm making up numbers, but it's a very, very, very high percentage, the way most, uh, almost all motorhome sidewalls are made, um, you have your fiberglass layer on the outside, okay, and then underneath that, you have a layer of Luon or wood and then you have your foam and your studs, and then you have your inner layer of wallboard, and in between every one of those layers, the glue machine goes over and hits glue over every square inch, and then they squeeze it together. And the manufacturers will try to make big deals over, well, my wall is pinch rolled versus their wall's vacuum bonded. Well, pinch rolling, it looks like a laundry wringer that they send it through to squeeze it all together, and they use a pressure activated glue. Um, and, or you can vacuum laminate, which is, they put a bunch of walls in one big bag and suck all the air out, and it's under pressure uh, for an extended period of time, 40 minutes, an hour, whatever. And, and they use a, 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 a water activated glue there that's a little slower drying, and both of them believe their way is better. Uh, well, the Coachman wall is the only wall in the industry that they actually do both. When they put the inner wall board on, it's, it's uh, uh, run, through, uh, the run through the ringer, if you will. It, it is uh, a pressure activated uh, pinch rolled uh, wall there. Uh, when they do the outer wall, um, they actually run it through the vacuum laminator. So it's, it's really double laminated, which nobody else in the industry is doing that. But that's not the main thing I want to talk about here. Main thing I want to talk about is this right here. I mentioned what's under most fiberglass is wood, Luon. Um, that's your weak point. If, uh, if you haven't heard of RV delamination, you should have if you're considering buying a motorhome. So that's going to be your next thing to Google. Write that down and get to Googling. Every manufacturer has dealt with it. Every manufacturer that laminates has dealt with delamination. Um, some a lot worse than others. Uh, that's when you see a bubble in the side of the coach. Um, I'm sure Tony can make my video show delamination right here. Um, so uh, he, he'll, he'll pop a picture up for me there, I'm sure. But uh, delamination is a bubble in your sidewall. It's generally caused by water getting in. Sometimes you'll just have a glue failure, but it's generally caused by water getting in around a window, around an opening, around a screw hole where they put this handle on. Moisture gets in. It gets into that Luon, which is wood. The wood swells up. The glue fails. Bad part about DLAM is there's really no solid fix for it. There's no way it's ever going to be factory new again. You can squirt some glue in there, but you're gluing rotted wood, swollen wood back together, and it's never going to look right. Coachman, like other manufacturers, had this problem. Around 2007, 2008, um, they said, you know, it's the Luon causing the problem. What are we going to do about it? They replaced it with Asdell. Okay. Asdell is a composite material. Um, it does not wick water up. It will not, it's not absorbent. It's not going to swell. Since they've been using the Asdell, 
they've virtually eliminated delamination. Um, it, it is unbelievable. We just do not see it in the Coachman products. Um, anything made from about 2007 or 8 on just does not delaminate. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so even if moisture were to get past, which isn't hard to imagine, um, it's not going to hurt your sidewall. It's not going to swell up. It's not going to fail. So that's a big thing. Um, there have been a few other manufacturers talking about this, starting to use it, but Coachman's been doing it for 10 years now. So um, they're way, way, way ahead of the curve when it comes to this. They also take a piece of every wall, every single wall. Um, when they cut out for this window here, okay, there's a piece left over. They take that piece and they tear it apart. They've got a machine that actually physically tears it apart. And what they want to see is what fails. It's okay if the foam if they can pull the foam apart, okay, it's okay if actually the Asdel splits. What can't happen is the glue can't fail. If that glue fails, that wall is scrapped, okay? So they've taken out their glue failures, they've taken out their water failures with the Asdel. So that's a big thing. When they cut this opening in this wall, okay, we had this nice perfect wall and then we're going to cut a bunch of holes in it. So we cut this out right here. When they made this wall, there was already aluminum all the way around here. Even in the gussets, the corners, these rounded corners are aluminum. You would be shocked, I won't name names, but think of the biggest name in the RV industry that you've ever heard of, and you know what? If you see how they do their walls, they route them out and they stick the window in, you know what's not in there? Any type of aluminum around here whatsoever. There's only foam and fiberglass around there. That's not how you build, you know, when you put a window in a house, you, it's all completely framed out um, with wood around there. Well, in this case, we don't want to use wood. We want to use aluminum. We certainly wouldn't do it with just fiberglass and foam. Over time, these windows are compression windows. Okay. There's, there's a clamp ring on the inside that, that holds that window in place. If it's just foam and fiberglass that will compress, that will eventually leak. And there's nothing you can do about it because there was no structure around here or around here or around here. There was none. The thing with Coachman is every single opening they cut in here is already aluminum perimeter frame. When they lay out the aluminum for this wall. They know where the windows are going to go. All of that support is already built into the wall. So when they put that router in there, it's real easy to route out because it's already got a frame around it. They just run the router to the outside edges and they've got a perfect opening. They put the window in, the windows fit better. You don't have any issues. So that's a little bit about construction. These are things that are not common to our industry. Okay. This is not the normal way things are built. Do your own homework on it, like I said, but I think you'll find um, uh, those are some very good points when you're considering an RV. I hope this has been informative for you. My name is Chris Anderson. I'm with Mount Comfort RV. Call me with any questions. Thank you for watching. Can't even tell you about it. <laughs>